As a Commodore 64 owner, I missed out on much of the classic era of Ultimate Play of the Game, though I had been able to play Jetpack on the VIC-20 at a mate's house. Apart from a few conversions that appeared long after the original ZX Spectrum releases, we were left in the cold. That is, until we got our own hero in the blocky form of Sir Arthur Pendragon. But we did have another, though few speak of him now. With good reason. In 1985, Ultimate played the game winding down. The Stamper Brothers had formed Rare and were beginning to build a reputation that would make them one of the premier developers for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The Ultimate name itself was sold to US Gold, who went on to release a few poorly reviewed titles under the banner before giving up. The Ultimate name was not what it once was in the days of Jetpack, Saber Wolf and Nightmare. Imhotep was released in those final days and was not quite what everyone had expected. It wasn't an adventure. It was... well... The inlay gives us the story. In the tenth year of the reign of the Pharaoh Zosa, the Nile does not rise and the lands of Egypt are plunged into famine. After years of this misery, he turns to Imhotep the Wise, who heads out on a quest across the lands of Thebes to seek guidance from Thoth. In the Souls of Ra, books held by a beautiful princess, is the secret to make these lands fertile once more. In an interview with Ultimate World in 2001, the game's author, Manuel Caballero, explained that he had written the game as a demo originally to get used to using the Commodore hardware, but had then expanded it into a full game which he submitted to various companies, and it was Ultimate that was to win out. The game was to be released soon after with minimal changes. This looked to be a phenomenal adventure, and the usual full-page adverts in the gaming magazines of the time heralded its release. Like many, I dashed down to Boots with my £10 note and picked up the game before reviews had been seen. The tape was soon loading into my 64, and... Right, let's have a go! How hard can it be? Oh, that hard. Oh dear. Ow. Oh. What? Oh, here it comes again. No. No, you little... For many, that was their full experience of the game, a few seconds of flying around being shot at and then being knocked from the sky by an enemy moving too quickly and erratically to hit, always homing in on you until the inevitable happens. If you were lucky, you might make it to the bit where the huge boulders are being thrown at you, and you can still be avoiding those same bird bone b****s while you do it. Death is swift in the world of Imhotep, and the rewards are non-existent. Dark Souls has nothing on this. It's not all bad of course, the graphics are colourful and well animated for the most part. There's parallax scrolling, I'm stretching here. But it did come with a free head cleaning cassette though. Result? Really? So, the game was a scrolling shooter with a difficulty set to unfair. Except it wasn't. The manual hints at being able to jump, but how did this factor into a shooter? Simple, by being hidden later in the game where no one but the most nimble, or those with an action replay cartridge, could reach. I was disappointed, not just because my 995 could have gone to something else, but because the game was just bad, well programmed maybe, but unplayable. Yet I kept returning to it over and over again, lured on by that promise of being able to jump. Surely there was more, if I could just get past the randomly spawning enemies, those homing buggers and those rocks. To my surprise, there is more. Much more. But is it worth the slog to get there? Let's find out. But I'm gonna cheat, for it is the only way. Thanks, emulation. Themulation. I'm emulating a straight tape image of Hitmatet in Winvice 2.4, and I've turned the collisions off so that nothing can hurt me. Now, I also 
forgot to get the microphone enabled in OBS, so this is post commentary, but that's fine because I won't be showing you the whole run. But the things to notice is that, as you can see, I'm being bothered by that bird, which started off as a normal flying bird and then suddenly changed into being an annoying buzz round and kill your bird. You'll get used to this. As you can see, there's another one there. At any time, any of these birds on screen can become homing killers of doom. And you can't avoid them. Though I did find, even in the old days, that the best way to play this bit wasn't to try and line up to shoot them. Because by the time you're lining up to shoot them, apart from the fact you're now getting boulders thrown at you, you're going to be getting killed. Best thing is just to avoid everything and only shoot what's coming right at you. Which, as you can see, is pretty hard. Now, the boulders aren't too bad. The boulders keep you on one side of the screen or the other. You can't really go into the middle. Because that's where the boulders are. But that does mean that you're completely constrained with all these birds buzzing around you, shooting randomly at you. It's not easy. But, if you think this is hard, any time now, we start getting meteorites coming in. And meteorites do not help. Meteorites constrain your movement even more. Thankfully, due to the lack of sprite multiplexing, it does reduce the number of birds that are trying to kill you. This is not necessarily a good thing. Now, at this point, you've still got birds, you've got rocks, and you've got meteorites. The game is actively trying to kill you. And it's probably succeeded a hundred times over by now. Now we're coming to the end of this level, which you'll probably notice is level two, and it was from the start. And you're being absolutely attacked by lots of birds all at once. Good luck in surviving this, because I don't think you could possibly do this without some sort of cheat. But, once you get to all these birds, it does mean that you're coming up to the fabled level 3. And that was how it just transitioned. That wasn't an edit, that was the game. Now, I had a problem, because even though I turned collisions off, the jumping still kills you. And at this point, I wasn't quite getting the jumping right. There's also a slight problem that due to the way your sprite moves, if you get to a certain point on the screen, you can't actually jump. Which could cause lots of problems and a heck of a lot of deaths. But as you can see, you've got to do all these jumps with birds and with rocks. At this point, I was a bit concerned, and I thought, what can I do? And I decided, while the meteorites are coming down on my last life, I will probably have to try and see if I can find a trained version that would let me jump across gaps. Especially gaps like that one. So... Okay, I managed to find a trained version of the game, so let's see, infinite lives, I think so, and definitely invincibility. Now it says I should be able to get across the gaps, I think we'll find out. Okay, so I've skipped through most of that first level because, to be honest, you've seen that already. And it's the runny jumpy bits that are important. We all know this has got a lot of shooting and dodging. But, ah, here we are. Let's see. Can we do this? Yes, we can. Okay. So I can just go straight across the gaps, I don't have to do anything, but let's see. Now, you can you can only get so far across this screen. If you jump there, that's 
not going to help at all. So you've got to make sure if you do any jumps, you've got to do it from back. That makes it tricky. And good grief, that's a lot of rocks. But this is, is apparently the runny jumpy bit. Uh, that wouldn't have worked in real life without the cheats because there was no way I was anywhere near that. Yeah, it makes the jumps a lot harder. Oh, here come the fireballs. It makes the jumps a lot harder because if you do it up here, there's a good chance you're going to hit that invisible wall. Hmm. I know a lot of older Commodore 64 games you tend to use that part of the screen to the right as the where the scores went because the way it addressed the screen there was the right side which was a thin strip and the left side which was the main plane area I remember that it's in my Commodore 64 reference guide hmm yeah I'm not, I'm not really getting that this is a really good really jumpy bit you might think differently but at the moment it's just things coming screaming out of the sky trying to kill me still and I can't fire back I can only jump hmm it's also interesting if you if you let go of the joystick he just walks forward if you pull back he slides backward doesn't make it easy to control him and some of these jumps do need to be done properly or well, at least they would do if I wasn't, wasn't using the invincibility cheats but yeah at this point not all that impressed but at least those birds aren't coming down and swooping at me guessing we're probably going to go onto level 4 as it says even though the game starts at level 2 I'm guessing we're going to end up going into another shooty bit in a minute because I never got to this part in the old days playing just using cheats and peeks and pokes so totally new territory and that is definitely a lot of rocks being lobbed at me. Okay. I think as a game this really does leave a lot to be desired. But it's programming, I don't think the programming's too bad. It's colourful. It has sound. <gasps> And it has another level, a proper, la proper, proper, proper platforming. Oh gosh. Okay. So I'm assuming I can't get hit or anything. So I've got obviously these b uh, bricks. Avoid the spikes, but the bricks must. Uh, thank you, Barrel, for following me down. Yeah, you got to pick these bricks up. I wonder if they're the books it mentioned in the inlay. Might be. Going the wrong way. The ladder's not there. Good grief. Ah! Oh, you can go off the side of the screen. Aha. Whether that's because of the trainer or not, I don't know. I thought that square thing was pick up a bubble. Okay, hooray! Oh, and another one! Another level. And I think I've died umpteen times there. Because, <laughs> yeah. You start there, those things come at you, and there's, you have to work out what you've got to do. Right, you've got to pick up these letters, I'm guessing, because it looks like it spells out Imhotep. That cannon how the heck would you say how the heck would you yeah it looks like you've got to pick up them in order I was worried about that ah eyes at the bottom aha 
hidden behind the square thing right I M so M's up above I can go through walls I'm gonna go through walls M ho that's right, so we need the H M ho and seriously M ho T T looks like T's over there yes oh and I could have gone straight through there and not have to do that uh, in more T E and P's at the top okay and the cannon this is impossible oh boy oh you can't jump but you can shoot okay we have another level and this time we're shooting barrels it looks like the green barrels take out anything behind them so that's good yeah they do okay mind the collapsing bridges and the birds in irritating places and the rocks no doubt we'll have fireballs in a minute as well right, the fire barrels forward and back that's something that's all you can do still constrained on the sides of the screen you can actually move in that but it's different I didn't expect this I don't think anyone expected this Not as easy as you think to go and shoot backwards. Go away, you want. Leave me alone. Hmm. Weak platforming followed by this. Maybe it was better when I thought it was just a shooting bit. No fireballs though, so that's a good thing. Fireballs would not be welcome right now. Those would definitely not be welcome right now. Because they come right they come right through the screen right where you have to stand. Oh, and you can possibly have avoided that bird. When is this going to be over? So glad I've got the cheat. I'm sure they were coming to the end of it. Oh yes we are! Hooray! Right, we're on a raft. Can't, can't, you can shoot shoot up. Oh we can shoot Dyke. Okay. This is new. You can shoot up diagonally. Move left and right. I think we've found proper decent gameplay. Oh, here come the rocks. You can actually defend yourself against all the things that are coming at you. For the first time in this entire game so far. Okay. Why couldn't this have been the first level? Oh, here come the fireballs and the rocks. Everything all at once. Okay, come on. 
We can shoot the fireballs, which makes things a little bit easier, I suppose. Not, not that I'm being hit where I am anyway. You just stay here and keep shooting upwards, and I won't... Ah, I won't die apart from the crocodile, apparently. <laughs> that was timing. Uh, right, so now I've got to... I can't just stay here. Because there's crocodiles. Easy to take out crocodiles, but crocodiles nevertheless. Yeah, this bit's actually playable. Yeah, but when the mounds are open, shoot the crocodiles. This is what the game should have been. Forget the flying around on birds stuff. Forget the platforming, which is just horrible. I have a feeling it's not much better when you're not cheating. I almost wish I could turn off the invincibility now to actually have a go at this bit. Ah, crams. Yeah, that would have eaten me. And that one. And his mate. But this bit's actually playable. Oh, two crocodiles. This bit's actually playable. This is almost a game that's decent. That looks like there's no more crocodiles coming because there's a lot of things on screen at once. We can only handle so many sprites at the moment, can we, Commodore 64? I don't think this is using a lot of clever interrupt tricks. I'm sure if I count the sprites, if I had a chance, I'd probably only find eight. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he says, as suddenly the crocodiles appear. Yes, we found actual decent gameplay. This could have been the, the whole game. Wouldn't have made it worth 9.95, but oh, another level, another platforming level. And I'm stuck in a rock. Okay, let's see. What do we do? Okay, I'm guessing. Okay, she, she makes an interesting noise when she jumps, assuming that's the beautiful princess. <laughs> uh, let's just go straight across. Don't have to win, I'm cheating. <laughs> okay, it looks like I have to go the long way around to get over there. Aha! Yeah, that, that, I'd say it looks like the beautiful princess, but I'm just going to assume it is. So nothing else to pick up. Can't get across there. Have to jump. Okay. Another level. Ah, oh gosh, another cannon. <sighs> Find the keys, avoid the barrels and the skulls and the spikes. I fail miserably. And let's see. Three, four more keys. Yep. Nothing else there. Let's go get this key. Oh, another cannon. Yep. We go. Hooray! What's level ten? Oh, level ten goes back to this. Now I'm guessing. I'm guessing it could have looped round. And yes, the game loops at level 10, so the lands of Egypt will remain infertile forever. <sighs> I'm happy to know that I pay my £9.95 for more than just the shooting level, but I'm still disappointed. The only level I liked was the river, mainly because it was actually playable, unlike the rest of the game. So, my review? Imitep isn't the worst game ever, and it did come with a free head cleaning tape. Don't think it was a good head cleaning tape though, so it's not going to increase my scores much. The graphics aren't terrible, but
but do get very busy once you get to the platforming levels. The sound is minimal with the only real music being the title theme. Only one level of the entire game feels really playable and very few will have seen that. You can see why it's not well known outside those who have actually played it and most of those people have probably tried to forget. Here's my review scores. There'll be worse games, there'll be better games, and I've probably got them on tape. I'm Stephen from roguenoid.co.uk. I'll catch you later.